Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Hightail News. I'm Mine, and we're as excited as you are for this brand new blog post with more music, in-game footage, and storyline hints. The first track we now know of is our first listening experience when we generate the world of Hightail. This will be played in Zone 1 upon entry. Contrary to popular belief though, Traveling Band will not be the first track to accompany us. As Oscar says in the blog post, this was one of the first songs to be created, but has undergone a lot of change since he first started working on it, much like a working title. Interesting. Oscar says he didn't want the song to repeat on a loop for the most part, since there's no way he can find out what the player is doing in their in-game time. So instead, we have a very cinematic score reminiscent of an adventure movie. This is a really important detail as most songs on loop can get very irritating and work against the immersion factor. In order to have successful loops that are noticeable, the song typically sacrifices its ambience and theatrics. Too many layers of instrumentation can begin to sound just like a noise. Thankfully, we can get the best of both worlds with Hightail. It was also specified that this was a daytime track, inferring that there will be different tracks for different times of the day and weather from a set list, which we have looked forward to. Of course, the palette of the zone and types of encounters we may have is what inspired Oscar to create more fluid, tone-setting pieces for us players. It will be worth noting that on release whether these tracks have smooth transitions, again to be less noticeable. Also keeping in mind that a new track for a rainy weather could simply be a very subtle drop in key for that mood effect. This second track is bouncy and fun dedicated to the Quebecs. Listening to this song gives us an insight on their temperament, when they're in the good mood. What do you think of it? Let us know in the comments, but this definitely has some elements we might expect from something like a live musical. Oscar gives a little away by saying he knew the track had to be cute, light, and playful, an apt description of the small tree orphans. But he also wanted it to seem as though at least some of the music was being played by the Quebecs themselves. We also know that the Quebecs are super friendly. So long as we don't approach their village, wielding an axe, which is a brilliant use of the character building in-game. If mobs and NPCs notice that we're wielding a weapon or holding one, that opens a bunch of possibilities for dynamic gameplay. Quebecs are very important to the story, which lead us to a few things. One, that they are brilliant allies, but two, that they might have their own arc. This could mean that we uncover something we didn't know about their role in the history of the Hightail world. Perhaps they were instrumental to Gaia's grief, or if they are really innocent, we may need to rely on them throughout the game if we're to defeat or overcome every obstacle. Interestingly, we have of firefly lights that some people may not have noticed before that were animated. A really nice touch to reinforce the Quebecs living harmoniously with the environment. The third track and final track we got today is simply called Gaia's Lament, and not much is revealed about what this could mean. Oscar said he had to be careful to stretch out the piece across exactly almost four minutes. So this could mean we're going to see some kind of four minute montage or dedicated dialogue for the story at some point, but it's classed as an exploration piece for a different location. Given the high emotionality in the song, we can assume we'll be traveling across a barren wasteland or an empty city following the attacks of the Baron. The GIF has a new weather type that could be snow or ash from a nearby volcanic eruption. Going by the plant life, this area seems to fit a tropical or subtropical climate. The house seems relatively small and simple to build, so this could appear earlier in the game than we may expect. Oscar closes by saying that all the tracks have a sense of musical cohesion that tied to the main theme, but each infused parts of lore and local elements. All of the music was created by Oscar with a MIDI keyboard and some samples, and all possesses the same instrumentation, which was designed to give the feel of unison. This explains why people felt confused about the lack of Arabian instrumentation in Night on the Dunes. Anyway, let us know what you think about the tracks below, and anything you particularly liked about the glimpses of gameplay we were given. See you in the next video.